Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new tutorial. So first things first, I hope everyone had a fantastic New Year's and thank you to everyone who subscribed, commented, liked and even watched all of my videos last year. Uh, it was a great year and hopefully 2013 is just as good if not better. Uh, so moving on, in this video what I'll be doing is creating what you see in front of you here. Now if you'd prefer a Photoshop version instead of Adobe After Effects, which this one will be, I'll put a link on the screen now as well as in the description if you're on a mobile device or whatnot, and you can check that one out there. Uh, so after I posted that video I got a few people asking for an After Effects version since I did originally create it in After Effects, so here it is and hopefully it helps you guys out. Uh, so as I said before, this is what we'll be creating. Uh, you can see the original photo here and then there is quite a few adjustments and it comes to this point. Uh, now I will not be showing you 100% how to create this, pretty much the same as the Photoshop tutorial. I will not be going over creating all of these small photos on here and the date up here. Now the reason for that is if we take a look at the hologram pad here, uh, this is the design layout and you can see after we do this main picture, all of this other stuff is pretty much just a repeat and the same process over and over again. Uh, so in this tutorial I'll be going over creating this outline, creating the board itself, this menu bar, importing this picture with the outline as well as the text here, and then all manipulating it together uh, so it looks like it's sitting in his hands like this. Uh, so hopefully it helps you guys out, it'll probably be about 15 to 20 minutes long, and hopefully you stick around and enjoy it. So let's get right into it, and I'll start off by just deleting all of this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. Uh, so go layer, new solid, and I'm just going to call this one uh, outline. Okay, now for this what I'm going to do is type in 1920 by 1080 in our width and height dimensions. Now the reason for this is because I wanted my hologram board here to kind of have a wide aspect ratio, pretty much like a high definition video. Uh, so you don't have to do these dimensions if you don't want, you can make it circle, square, uh, rectangle, triangle, whatever you want. Uh, get a bit creative and you'll be far better off. Uh, so once we've done that we want to make sure it's set to square pixels and make comp size and click OK. Ok so from there what I'm going to do is create a mask. So to do this we're going to make sure our outline layer is selected here. We want to go up to our rectangle tool, click, hold in our mouse and go down to our rounded rectangle tool. So once you've done that, we want to pretty much just click and drag it out. Okay, so once we've done that, we can see that the corners are kind of curved. Now, if your corners don't look as curved as this, or you want them more curved or less curved, what you can go ahead and do is press the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard or just hold it in. And you can see as we're doing that, the curve is becoming, you know, more gradual and a much bigger curve. Uh, so once you've done that, what we can go ahead and do is just release it and we've got a fairly decent shape right there. Okay, so once we've done that, we pretty much just want to duplicate this twice by pressing Control D, and we want to rename these layers. Uh, so by hitting the Return or Enter key, you can rename this middle one Fill, and then rename the top one to something like Gradient. Uh, so taking a quick look at the hologram pad here again, you can see it's not just one color. What I did was I made the top bit slightly darker, slightly more solid looking, and then it faded out. And uh, yeah, what I'll be doing is showing you how to replicate that, and it's fairly easy. Uh, so we're going to start off with our outline layer. Uh, so we're going to just hide our top two for this one, and click our outline layer. Go over to our effects and presets over here, and type in fill. Uh, so we want to drag that onto our layer, by just dragging it on like so. Okay, so what we're going to do now is click on our color up here. Now I actually did write down the color codes I used to save me playing around in the tutorial. Uh, but again, you don't need to copy these settings, you can use green, purple, uh, yellow, red, whatever you like, just get a bit creative again. And the color code I'm going to use is 08BCB6, uh, and you can see it's this kind of uh, turquoise color, this greenish blue. And uh, then we want to go ahead and apply a glow to this, so by going back to our effects and presets, we want to type in glow, and just drag that one on. Uh, so again, I wrote down the settings for this, and what settings we are going to use is a 2.5% threshold, and then keeping everything else the same. Okay, so that's pretty much the look we're going for right there, and now we can go ahead and enable our middle layer, which is our fill layer. Uh, so going back and typing fill back in our effects and presets, we can drag this one onto our middle layer, and click on our color again, and the color code I am using for this one is 0F6... 
597 and you can see it's this kind of dark blue color and then we want to enable our top layer and drag in fill once more and the color code we are going to use for this one is 0957A7 and you can see it's just this slightly darker blue right here uh, so now what we have to do is adjust the opacity values for all of these now the reason we're doing this is to give it that slightly see-through look and to make it look a bit more like a hologram so by selecting all of our layers by clicking the bottom one holding shift and clicking the top one we want to press the T key on our keyboard to bring up our opacity uh, so we're going to start off with our outline layer and the opacity I'm going to use is somewhere around 70% then moving up to our fill layer I'm going to use something like 25% and then 35% for our top layer uh, so you can see as we enable all of these it goes light, a bit darker and then a bit darker again and this is how we're going to start building our board ok so the first thing we need to do is make the outline just an outline so we're going to uh, just hide these for now and double tap our M key to bring up all of our mask properties here in After Effects and what we need to do now is select our mask 1 by clicking it here and press Control D on our keyboard which will duplicate it now if we expand the drop down menu here we can see that we have all of the options and we want to change this one to Difference and then bring up our mask expansion and you can see what that's doing is it's just kind of creating this nice outline here and then once we enable our other two layers uh, everything looks a bit nicer now since we have that solid outline so now we can forget about our outline layer and we have finished that one and moving on to the rest so our fill layer we don't have to touch at the moment and just going to our gradient layer what we're going to do is grab our rectangle tool up here click and we want to make a mask so to do this what we have to do is click about halfway down make sure our gradient layer is selected click and drag straight across now you can see what that's doing is it's adding even more of that layer onto it however if we double tap M once again and we change our mask 2 here to subtract you can see now that only the top part is darker so what we're going to do now is bring up our feather and you can see that's causing it to slowly fade out and get the look that I showed you in uh, the original version so then you can go ahead and just drag up the line here by holding shift and adjusting it to your liking and that is pretty much it for the base of our hologram board if you're not happy with that just play around a bit more and you know change up the colors and stuff like that and try something new so what we're going to do now is select these three layers here not our background layer and go up to layer pre-compose now we're just going to call this one something like hologram board and the reason I am pre-composing it is because it's going to make it much easier to adjust uh, once we're all done so for example instead of adjusting each separate element to look like it's in his hands we can just adjust the pre-composition once all of the elements are together and it's going to save us a lot of hassle okay so double clicking to enter our hologram uh, board here the pre-composition uh, you can click this little checker box down here to make it transparent or not just so you can see how visible or transparent something is I guess I'm just going to leave it black for now and what we're going to do now is actually start building the menu bar okay so the way I did this I just grabbed a rounded rectangle tool up here and I just made sure no layers were selected and clicked and drew exactly where I wanted it and now, as you can see the edges are fairly rounded right now but I don't want it quite that round so I'm just going to hold the down key on my keyboard and that's looking fairly good right there so now if we just deselect that quickly we can zoom in and just adjust it from there so you can see it's not completely lined up and you can just fine tune things with the arrow keys yet again and that's looking fairly good so what I'm going to do now is get our shape layer selected down here press the T key to bring up our opacity again and change this to something around 65 and that's just going to kind of darken the top here give it a bit of a see through look and that should be fairly good okay so from there what I'm going to do is actually grab our text tool and start typing in the text now this can be whatever you want if you're copying this kind of design and the original idea I had for this was kind of like a portfolio hologram tablet kind of thing uh, so that explains why mine says something like home and then it says something like gallery contact and stuff like that so I'm just going to type home then we can do something like five spaces create a divider like that by holding shift and pressing the key above your enter key do another five spaces or so and go contact and then uh, gallery and so on and so forth and I'll just leave it at that 
Uh, so then we can go ahead and choose our size and font. I'm using Century Gothic as usual, and that's pretty good right there. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is actually select both of these and go Layer Precompose. And I'm just going to call this something like Menu Bar. Okay, so once we've done that, we can go ahead and go down to our mode over here. If you don't see mode, what you can do is press F4 on your keyboard and change this to something like overlay. And you can see that's just going to make it darker, a bit more transparent, and it's going to give the text a kind of glowing slash hologram look. So if we go back to our original file over here, you can see it's all kind of starting to come together. Uh, so just might fine tune this a little bit more and get rid of all of these ones I don't need, sorry. Uh, just select our text in here and just make this a tiny bit bigger. And then we'll just go back and have a look. And that's looking fairly good right there. Okay, so once we've done that, what we can go ahead and do is actually start putting in the picture. Uh, so this is really simple. Just import a photo into After Effects by dragging it into here. And I'll use the same one that I used in the final one as well as in the Photoshop tutorial. Uh, so just drag that one into the composition here. And this is my clear vision photo. And again, if you like it, you can see the full quality one on DeviantArt with the link in the description. Uh, so by holding shift and dragging the corners, that's going to keep it the right uh, scale, I guess you could say. And just moving this one into position. And that's looking fairly good right there. Okay, so what we need to do now is give the photo that kind of rounded corner effect like the rest of the board has, just so it kind of fits the same style. So that's fairly simple. We just select our clear vision layer down here or your photo layer and go down to our rounded rectangle tool yet again. And you can just double tap the tool and that will automatically create a mask around it. However, the uh, corners aren't particularly too round. So by clicking and dragging across the entire photo and then holding the up key on our keyboard, we can adjust the roundness of the corners very simply like that. Uh, just give it a sec. It's taking a little bit of time. Uh, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Uh, so now we just need to adjust our mask, which is you know fairly simple. We just need to line up the sides. And if you double click, you can see the transform box comes up here, which makes things a whole lot quicker and easier. And just make sure that it's not going outside the lines and then double click uh, to finalize it. Now you can see our picture here has nice rounded corners like the rest of the design. And now we just want to give it a nice dark outline to help separate it a bit from the background. Uh, so one of the simplest ways to do this is just duplicate our picture layer here and then change up the scale of the one behind it. Then we want to go to effects and presets, type in fill and drag it to the bottom layer and change it to something like black or another dark gray uh, like the menu board. Now if we change the opacity on that by pressing T, you can see it creates a nice dark outline for it if we enable our transparency. Uh, so that's looking pretty good there. It does need a little bit of fine tuning just at the top here. If we just drag that up a little bit. There we go. Um, so moving on. From there, all we have to do now is grab our text tool and type in the name of your photo if, again, you're going for this kind of style, which in my case is clear vision. Uh, so then we just need to position it and increase the size a little bit. And then going back, that is looking fairly good and that is all I'm going to show you on the hologram board. Uh, so taking a quick look at what I showed you, I showed you how to create this nice glowing outline here with this nice transparent back and this nice gradient. Then from there I showed you how to create this menu bar with the text and the dividers and then I showed you how to import a picture, create a nice outline with it uh, with the name of the photo. Uh, so taking a look at the original one again, it's fairly similar. All this one has is that same repeated process of the text and the photos and then just a little bit of creativity, not really too much, but uh, with the date up here. Um, so one thing I just noticed I didn't do in this one is change the opacity of the photo itself, just to give it a bit of an invisible look, and then change the opacity of the clear vision here. Now I didn't want to set this one to overlay because I didn't want it to have that kind of invisible look, and I wanted it to kind of separate itself uh, from the rest of the text up here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we want to go back out here to our main composition, and you can see this is it here. So what we want to do now is make this a 3D layer by clicking down here. Again, if you don't see the 3D options, press F4 on your keyboard, and that will toggle between it. So now we want to press R to bring up all of our rotation options, and to save me fooling around again, what I did was just 
write down my rotation options from the final version. However, this is obviously going to be different for yours since you will be working on a different photo. Okay, so now I'm also going to hold shift and press S to bring up our scale. Drop the scale to something like 45%. Then I'm going to go ahead and change our orientation to 358 degrees. Uh, change our X rotation to negative three. Change our Y rotation to negative 13. And then change our Z rotation to negative three. Okay, so that's looking pretty good right there. And then I just need to drag this into place. And you can see that is where our pre-composition comes in handy. Uh, now a little tip for you, which this is a little bit late in the tutorial to mention this, is I actually got my brother and I stood in this same place and I got him to hold uh, my iPad or my brother's iPad just as a fill in just so I could try and get the angle as precise as possible. I know I didn't really overlay the images and you know compare them exactly but it just got me a bit of an idea kind of how I should tilt it, how I should slant it and transform it and stuff like that and that was quite a big help so that's something you might think about doing. Um, so I might bring up the scale just a little bit more so it's a little bit bigger and then drag this one into position. Now also I had him pointing at a specific picture in the final one so that's also something that you should try and do. Okay so the last thing that we need to pretty much do in this tutorial is kind of make it look like he's holding it. Now to do this the simplest way is to duplicate our background layer, drag that to the top and then cut out his hands. Now the reason we do not want to cut out the board here is because then if we want to change the position of the board or the rotation of the board at a later date, we're going to have to delete that mask and redo it. Whereas uh, by cutting out his hands, his hands aren't going to move at all and we can move around the board as much as we like and it's going to stay between the hands at all times. Uh, so making our background layer here visible again, I'm just going to grab the pen tool and pretty much just trace around it like so. Uh, now the pen tool isn't too hard, I've seen a lot of people have a bit of trouble with it. However, just practice, take your time with it, and you just pretty much want to trace around it. Uh, so a couple of little tips for it, the longer you drag this line, the more gradual the kind of curve is, I guess you could say. And you want to make sure that line kind of lines up with where you're going next. So you can see as I'm going, uh, the line that's coming out of the dot that I'm placing is kind of always lining up in the same general direction as the next point that I'm placing. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this to where I'm finished this since I'm sure you guys don't wanna watch me do this uh, and it'll waste everyone's time. Uh, so just pretty much cut out to halfway up his wrists here. I don't know why I'm saying that since he'll be working on a different photo, uh, but you get the idea. Um, so I'll cut back when I am done. Okay, so jumping back into this really quickly, you can see I just did a fairly quick job at cutting it out. Uh, there is a few rough spots around his fingers and hands here, and I recommend going in just adding a bit of a feather to each of your masks. So double tapping the M key on our keyboard, you can see it brings up all of our mask properties, or you can just tap the F key and it'll bring up just the feather properties. Uh, so from here, I'm just going to make it a little bit easier to see and disable our mask path by clicking this option down here. That just gets rid of uh, the yellow lines. Then I can just adjust the feathering from there. So our first mask is this one by the hands here. And I'll just add about a 10 pixel feather. Then I might even go in on our expansion and bring that down a tiny bit just by one pixel, negative one pixels. And then going down to our second mask, which is this hand, I'm going to add another 10 pixel feather onto this one. Or maybe something like a three pixel should be good. And then up here, which is the mask on his face, this one's going to be fairly feathered since you can see it's really out of focus. Uh, so I'm just going to drag this up like so. Uh, so that's all looking fairly good right there. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. So I hope this helped you guys out. I hope it kind of showed you the techniques behind creating something like this and gave you some ideas. Uh, so as you can see, this looks a whole lot better than the Photoshop version did. Um, now the reason for that is again because I created an After Effects to begin with and I just saw an error up here on the finger, uh, but we'll just ignore that for now. And um, yeah, so I'd very much appreciate it if you could hit that like button if this helped you out. You can favorite it and subscribe for future videos. You can also check out all four of the final futuristic photos I did on my DeviantArt with the link in the description. And by clicking the screen now you can visit my previous video or you can subscribe to my future ones. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.